Reggie, the Holistic Nutritionist, and this is Eat to Run Info Bites, helping you run stronger, faster, one bite at a time. And today we're going to talk about gluten-free flours. What? Yes, gluten-free flour. Let me explain. A couple months ago, I had a client ask me for a gluten-free pizza crust recipe. She couldn't eat gluten at the time and was missing her pizza, so I told her, I'm so sorry, but no such thing exists. I tried to let her down gently and be done with it. See, I had tried myself to come up with a gluten-free pizza crust recipe again and again and again. And after trying recipe after recipe after recipe and just ending up with disasters in the kitchen, they were too crumbly, they fell apart in my hands, they tasted disgusting, they were way too thick to try to hold everything together, I gave up. But after this conversation, I knew I wanted to create the perfect gluten-free pizza crust. And so I got to work in the kitchen again, and after failed attempt after failed attempt, I landed on a magic gluten-free flour mix. And it ended up making me a perfect gluten-free pizza crust. So I want to share with you this gluten-free flour mix today. So what are the three flours found in my magic gluten-free flour mix? They are sorghum flour, brown rice flour, and arrowroot starch. And each one has a very specific purpose in why it's included in this mix. So first of all, with sweet white sorghum flour, out of all the gluten-free flours, sorghum flour is actually said to look and taste the most like wheat flour. It lacks the binding properties that wheat flour has because of the gluten, of course. So if you were to just use sorghum flour, you'd end up with a a finished product that would crumble apart in your hands. It would also be fairly dense as it's a fairly heavy flour. But it has a slightly sweet taste and is a fantastic one-third of the mix. To balance out what sorghum offers, we've got brown rice flour here. And I should mention that sorghum flour also is a great source of protein and fiber. So it's got more protein and fiber than a lot of the gluten-free flours out there. Um, brown rice flour has a slightly nutty taste, uh, but it's retained all of the nutrients from the whole grain brown rice because it is just whole grain brown rice ground up really fine. Um, it is slightly uh, gritty in texture, sandy in texture, and lacks any binding capacity. So it helps to lighten up the sorghum, but again, if you baked with just sorghum and brown rice flour, it would, the finished product would fall apart in your hands. The last third of the mix is arrowroot powder. You may have heard of arrowroot in the form of arrowroot cookies, which are marketed to toddlers who are teething because arrowroot is really easy to chew, to swallow, and to digest. It is the binding. It has the binding properties that the first two flowers are missing out on. So this is what's going to actually hold everything together. Um, arrowroot powder also makes a fantastic thickener for sauces, but in baking, it's going to hold everything together. So there you have it, the magic mix of gluten-free flours that you want to be using when you create any baked good or pizza crust uh, anytime you go gluten-free. Let me know if you have any gluten-free dishes that you just absolutely love or if you have a certain dish recipe baked good that you wish there was a great gluten-free version of I love a challenge in the kitchen, as you heard earlier. Let me know in the comment box below this video over at eattorun.com. And if you want to make sure you're on the list to receive an update every single week, head on over to eattorun.com and sign up to receive info bites delivered to your inbox each and every Thursday. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time on Eat to Run Info Bites. I wasn't supposed to eat it.